All right. Welcome to Mastering Simulation, the past, the present, and the future. We're going to talk about where simulation came from, why it emerged, why it's valuable. And we talk a lot about historical information as far back as 3000 BC during this day. The historical information isn't meant to make you simulation history majors so much as it is to have you appreciate how long people have been trying to figure out how simulations work. That's what I want you to appreciate. And you'll see little keys or little, little key links in the chain of simulation pop out like in the year 2300 BC. You'll see another one pop out in 500 AD. And you'll be surprised to say, that idea is that old? And in some cases, you'll say, that idea is that young? We didn't think of that till 1984? Oh my gosh. So that's why we talk about the past of simulation. Then we're going to talk about the present. And we're specifically going to show some of the projects that are going on right now. Some of the technologies that you'll, be, you'll find in virtual simulations or war games, something that's happening right now. And then we're going to talk about the future. And in the future, what I can do is I can explain to you what's in the labs that I know about right now, but I can also explain to you what is starting to come out of people's minds, what people are starting, what people are starting to envision that is possible. And I can show you, not necessarily that I know this is going to come to fruition, but I know that there's a researcher somewhere who's thinking, I'm going to make this happen. This is going to happen 10 years from now, or may, hopefully not longer than that. So that's the future part. And there, that's how we kind of conclude each lecture, is describing what people are thinking of for the future. The material in this course is copyright uh, by me, and you can't reproduce it in any form. Uh, without my written permission. And some of you may want to do that. Just let me know. If you need to reproduce some of this, if you need copies for some reason, I'm more than willing to share some of the electronic media, though not the whole kit and caboodle, but some of it, and some of the written material as well. The course itself is not um, my own creation. I organized it all. I created all of the presentation material, all the fonts, but the research that's gone into this and the development is thanks to thousands of different researchers and hundreds of different organizations that have been doing work in this area for 50 years roughly. And in your notebooks I list some of the people and the organizations that I know I have gathered information from to kind of give them a little bit of the credit for the work that, that's incorporated here. Uh, myself, I'm the chief scientist for Model Benders LLC. Uh, I'm also a technical director for a defense contractor working days on a large simulation pro project. And I'm an adjunct professor at Florida Institute of Technology. I serve on the editorial board of a journal called TOMAX, which is the Transactions on Modeling and Computer Simulation. And I do several other things. I've been actively involved in simulation for 13 to 15 years. I actually started in the operations research field and I didn't know I was in the simulation business for a few years until I did some jumps into the analytical field and then into the training field and I realized that I was tying together a thread of operations research, simulation analysis or systems analysis and simulation for training and I said I've been in this business longer than I thought. But that's some information on myself. Um, this course is structured around seven distinct threads, and that's what all of the tabs are in your notebook. There are seven large categories of simulation out there right now, and this course takes each one of those in turn, and the first one we're going to talk about is live rehearsal. Live rehearsal is the most ancient form of simulation. Uh, we conducted it for thousands of years before we ever used the word simulation. But we're talking about the practice of going out and rehearsing something, doing something again and again until you're good at it, but doing it before you have to be good at it. Just like a basketball team practices and rehearses, just like the military goes through uh, rehearsals of their missions before they actually get into a situation where the score matters. That's what live rehearsal is. And we'll talk a little bit about that and how it's conducted right now. Then we're going to talk about virtual reality, which is one of the flashiest uh, instances of simulation. In virtual reality, you're usually talking about an immersive experience, something where you wrap the simulation world around somebody and try and get them to believe that they are in it, that it's all around them and they're part of it. Then we'll go on to war games, and war games are usually more of a game chessboard kind of environment where you stand above 
the situation that you're working on and you make decisions that influence other entities in that battlefield or in that uh, business environment or in that manufacturing environment. And so the war game allows you to experiment and try out your ideas on other people. And you're not necessarily immersed in it. You care about it the same way a chess player cares about the game that's unfolding before him. But the things being acted upon are not you. They're the pieces on the board or the units in front of you. And then we'll talk about simulation interoperability. And since most of you are in the defense business, interoperability is something you have to already have heard about. Uh, as the military has built hundreds and hundreds of simulators over the last 50 years, they've ended up with some really great tools. And now we're, we're hell-bent to get those things to work together. We've got to have uh, a flight simulator and a tank simulator and a helicopter simulator all interoperate with each other and be able to join each other in the same virtual environment. Then we'll step out of uh, the military context a little bit and look at systems analysis. We'll look at what it means to sit down and analyze a system. And a system is a very generic term. It means something as small as that laptop computer or something as large as the entire industrial military complex. It's where you define a boundary and you say this is a system of objects that interact with each other in some meaningful way and I'm going to study it. And you build a model or a simulation which represents it and allows you to understand it better. There's an entire lecture on that. Then we do discrete event simulation. Uh, discrete event simulation is usually thought of as a course that you took in college. You went in and for a whole semester they taught you about random numbers and discrete event simulation languages. It's essentially a group of techniques and a group of tools that structures a model in a specific way that makes it easy to solve. And there, that lecture or the, the discrete event science is usually found in all of the other fields. And then we'll talk about entertainment. I tried to save the best one for last or the most enjoyable one for last. Uh, just a few years ago, when you talked about simulation, you were almost always talking about military-only applications or manufacturing-only applications. Now, your home is full of simulations. Simulation has permeated the entertainment industry so that it lives in the video arcades, it lives on your home PCs, many of you might have a home game console, many of you might have gone to a theme park like a Disney or an... Or an uh, a Disney or a uh, Universal Studios where the theme park ride was driven by a simulation. And you're just going to see more of that. The simulation technology that, it, that was emerged in the military context is going out everywhere. And anybody with a computer is including the ideas that we developed in wargaming and virtual reality for the military into theme parks and computer games. They're everywhere. In the course of the day, these lectures are grouped into four packets. And you get a physical break, get up and get out of the room, have some donuts, something, uh, at, each of, at the end of each one of those packets. Ta we'll take a small mental reset between each lecture, but we hit two lectures or two different topics before we actually get up and, and have some refreshments or get up and, uh, and go to lunch. Now, that's not to limit you. Uh, at any time that you feel you need some coffee, there's coffee back there, there's some danishes, feel free to go back and help yourself. Uh, come and go as you like, and also for you know, other, other needs. At the end of this day, if you feel that you must know more about military simulation, there's a place to learn that. It's in Salon 24, 20, right down the hall here. We'll be teaching a three-day course entitled Military Simulation Techniques and Technologies. In that course, we talk about simulation systems, the design and architecture of those. We talk about how the infrastructures work, how time and event management are embedded inside of those. We talk uh, about modeling specifically for military objects like tanks and trucks and, and ships and submarines and planes and that kind of stuff. And we talk about the behaviors that drive those models and we talk about multi-resolution modeling, the environmental modeling that surrounds them. If you need to know more in that area, we can sign you up between now and Wednesday. Don't be shy. <laughs> There's 30 people signed up for that class right now and we'll be teaching it right down the hall starting on Wednesday. Now this is the formal introduction. We're going to start by introducing you to some of the concepts and some of the terms that we'll be using all day long. And of course, the, f the first thing we'll do is start with definitions. Why? Well, we want to be able, we want to ensure that we're both talking about the same thing when we talk about a model. A model is strictly 
A physical, mathematical, or otherwise logical representation of a system, entity, phenomena, or process. That is the representation of something in the real world. A model is where you've gone out into the real world and grabbed information about something and dragged it into your lab and forced it into your software, or in some cases into your hardware simulation. You've gone out and captured the characteristics of a manufacturing line. You've gone out and captured the characteristics of a submarine. The characteristics that are important to you. You drag them in and you have control over them in your virtual world. The second definition is of a simulation. A simulation are the activities and interactions of models over time. That's what happens when you turn a model on, when it's running, when it's interacting with other models. That's a simulation. Strictly speaking, a model is a noun, a simulation is a verb. In practice, you'll find that everybody interchanges both terms. So you're not ever going to be holding anybody to that noun-verb distinction, but that's strictly how they're defined. And finally, a war game. A war game is a simulation that involves two or more opposing forces. It uses rules, data, and procedures designed to depict an actual or real life situation. Um, a war game, if you've been in the military and done this, you understand that it's much bigger than the simulation itself. The simulation is somewhere in the bowels of the war game, but the simulation is probably the software that's creating a virtual world. That's surrounded by the computer hardware that makes it run. That's sur surrounded by computer and communications network, which carries that information to the people that are actually using it. That's surrounded by computers or role players who, who are responding to that information. And then that's surrounded by a training audience who's actually in learning to do their job better. And that's surrounded by what? <laughs> Ships, air bases, tanks, real pieces of equipment that they are using in their training. A war game is a much bigger experience or a much bigger entity than a simulation itself.